Our regular series of reports from the Charity Learning Consortium is back. And this time we're talking to Jane Megerson hill of Sport England. See what they're up to. It's great to be back on Learning Now TV. Thank you to Charity Learning Consortium for sponsoring this section where we talk to many of their members about the great work that they are doing in the third sector um, and what we can learn in our corporate lives for learning and development. Today, we're going to speak to Jane Megerson hill Jane is with Sport England, who obviously known for getting the country moving, um, um, but she's going to be talking to us about coaching of a different kind today. During lockdown, she has run a coaching programme for her organisation, and um, she's got a great story to tell. So Jane, tell us a little bit about Sport England. So Sport England are an arm's length body um, and we exist to help put the government strategy into place to help the nation get more active. So it's not just about sport. We are really keen to get um, everybody from every background um, to be able to get physically active in whatever way that suits them. So you might have heard of This Girl Can. That's probably our most well-known marketing campaign. But we've also recently um, launched Join the Movement which is another way um, that we are trying to help people keep active in these strange times that we're in. Okay, well, it's these strange times that we're in that we really want to dig down into today because you've been not just obviously getting the, the country moving, but you've been helping your own teams to, to coach. And um, that's sort of business coaching, isn't it? That's not standing on the sidelines of a field. So what have you done? Talk us through your story about coaching. So I've been, I had been working on it for well over a year um, in the planning stage to bring it to life. I think coaching is such a critical skill for all our managers to be able to have in their toolkit. And what we were hoping to achieve was more of a coaching culture at Sport England. So as you said, as an organisation, we're very keen to improve the quality of coaching in the sector that we work with. But internally, I was really keen to make sure that our line managers had that skill and were able to use a coaching leadership style, which is a much nicer way of managing people. And also part of our performance management process now is to use, we've moved away from sort of performance appraisals and more towards regular coaching conversations and having a line manager who's really your coach um, is important for us as an organization. So, We'd done, we sort of played with some training many years ago when I first started and we'd done a two day in the classroom teaching people how to be coaches um, and I think like a lot of face-to-face -face training that was great, people enjoyed it but that was a nice couple of days, they went away and nothing changed. Okay, that's so, quite typical isn't it? That <laughs> And, that, yeah. and that, to be honest, coaching is a practical skill. So yeah. getting people in a classroom to actually practice it, it, it would be a quite a normal thing to do. Um, yeah. But you've you've got a different route. Yeah, well, I've experienced in other organisations, again, a similar approach where we, you know, we do training and that and training is great. But if people go back to an environment and nothing's changed, their behaviours are just going to go back and they're going to do what they've always done. So I was keen from the start to really try and implement a blended learning approach where people had an opportunity to practice, to really practice the skills and to keep revisiting it over a number of months with the hope that it was more of a kind of learning journey rather than a one-off training event. So a blended programme was something that I set about trying to create and I did focus groups. I talked to the people who would be involved in the programme, really to understand what they thought they would like to get out of it. Um, so it was a long time in the making and we were all ready to launch in January. Um, it was intentionally blended in a way that wasn't. So what sometimes also happens is you, you have a day in the classroom and then we have some follow up digital content and we call that blended learning and it's not it really isn't. no it isn't that's right. <laughs> because my experience was people didn't I mean I did try that you know hands up I did try that um but it didn't work so again people just didn't engage with that because it wasn't part of the program and our line managers are busy I mean this year particularly for Sport England has been a very very busy year our line managers have been really busy as an organization we've had a real part to play in helping the nation get through this pandemic so what I was what I wanted to get across is that coaching isn't something that I wanted to add to my line manager's day I just wanted to change the nature of the conversation and to help them to have more effective conversations that they were having anyway yeah. and in a virtual environment it is really 
it's even harder, you know, to to have sort of performance conversations um, in this in this way. So I was really keen that we kept the program going despite um, the pandemic that kicked off. That was sort of partway through my first pilot program. So the impact of the pandemic on the on the program, it seems like it actually increased the drivers for it. Um, like you say, it's harder to manage uh, at a distance remotely. But um, how did it actually impact on the program rolling out? Well, we'd started two pilot groups in January. So I had two pilot groups and bearing in mind the whole program goes for over six months, but we were well into the first two pilot groups and I had another two groups due to be starting in March. So the two, the first two pilot groups, we'd had our two face-to-face days. So our program was designed to be a blended learning program that lasted at least six months. And the content is over eight modules and those modules are a mix of facilitated face-to-face blended learning so there's digital learning there's resources there's TED talks there's um, video examples and e-learning as well as facilitated face-to-face sessions so there was only ever going to be two face-to-face sessions um, and the rest was going to be accessed digitally some of that is facilitated like action learning set type groups and webinars but there was only ever going to be two face-to-face dates and that was because I really wanted it to be accessible to um, more people in our organization we already had a third of our organization working remotely so I really wanted a program that um, enabled people to access the learning when it suited them at a time it suited them where it suited them Um, so the two face-to-face modules we had already run with the first two pilot groups and then as I said I had a couple more ready to go in March so when the pandemic happened we had to decide do we run them Um, so I know a lot of training got cancelled at that time but I was so keen that we wouldn't that we could keep this program going. It was so important, I thought, um, for the line managers involved and for the kind of culture shift that we were trying to achieve. So um, I got together with our fantastic supplier. We were working with a great supplier who helped us to deliver the facilitated sessions. And we just rejigged it so that rather than being face-to-face, it was digital. Now, the face-to-face first module was designed to be in a tennis centre where we got to kind of hit a tennis ball around and it was really interactive and First two groups actually loved that. So there was a little bit of apprehension around, could we actually do that digitally quite as well? But the feedback was amazing. And particularly the second face-to-face day, which uses um, a forum theater format, I was just blown away with how effective it actually was. And I felt like the learning content was, you know, 99% there. The thing you miss out on is, you know, coffee and biscuits and cake and the chat at lunch, but the actual learning content because it is about coaching and you can get into small groups and you can still practice, um, it actually worked really well virtually. And I was just absolutely thrilled that we didn't have to cancel anything. We were able to keep it going and the rest of the content was digital anyway. So it felt like a step change, but we didn't have to fundamentally change the whole program. That's fantastic. So what we're hearing there, you've got really strong drivers and the drivers around cultural shift. And you've got a really clear program with lots of different elements so the accessibility for everybody um, which is wonderful the fact that it was virtual so much of it to start with hasn't really uh, the impact of lockdown hasn't really been that big a thing for you and you've actually proven you can teach coaching in an online space which you know people traditionally think you need to sit in a room with your coachee and and practice so yeah a wonderful inspirational story for all of us uh, in the corporate world to really take away thanks very much for sharing it Jane I appreciate it It's my pleasure. Thank you so much.